Hello world, Shelly here, and I thought today we would get one more round of favorites and fails in before we turn our attention to the favorites of the entire year of 2020. So these are products I've been using recently within the past month to two, and I really, really enjoy them. I've talked a lot about skincare recently, so I'm gonna fly through a couple of skincare things. The, I just wanna make some call outs on the ones that I'm really, really enjoying. Number one, anything by Purito. I didn't even bother to grab everything. I'm so digging that brand, mm, so good. But I'm gonna go through these quickly, so check my very recent skincare videos if you want the full info on all of these. First one I wanna mention is the YSL Pure Shots. This is the firming version of the Pure Shots serum, and I feel like this is a really nice watery consistency that is working well in my layering of extra moisture between my typical skincare steps, and the firming is actually something I really enjoy, or an approach I enjoy, I should say, that it's not something that is like causing your skin to feel firm immediately. It's not an instant action. It's a, it's a firming in the sense that it is, the ingredients are helping your body to perform as it did when it was younger. So it's kind of giving a boost to some of the cell turnover systems and things in your body that as you get older don't perform as effectively or as efficiently and so it's giving your body help to do what it did naturally and I just like that whole concept. So you end up having firmer looking skin over time because your skin is actually behaving like it's younger. So bravo, I'm enjoying the YSL. Shout out to the Benton Snail Be High Content Essence. This is such a healing formula to me. I am, I'm using it morning and night and I feel like it's really helping, especially when I overdo it with my acids, which you know I am prone to do. I try not to and I'm getting better, especially now that I've been doing the seven skins and bringing hydration back into my life. But uh, this one just has the healing properties of the snail and the bee essence are blowing my mind kinda. <laughs> Good stuff. Couple things from Beauty Pie, the subscription service where they have, you know, private labeled skincare and makeup. You pay a subscription fee in order to be a member to gain access to the wholesale prices. Uh, this is the Pure Ceramides uh, Eye Boost, Elastic Eye Boost Serum. It's got little metal thingamajigs. I feel like I showed this in a my favorites in that recent favorite skincare video, but it's so good. Keep this in your fridge, and when you use it under your eyes, and I use it on my hoods as well, because I have puffy hoods of my lids, and it feels so good, and it is super hydrating. Great for dry skin. The other Beauty Pie thing I've been loving, this might have been in last month's favorites, but I'm loving it so much. It is the Super Active Capsules. Is it Elizabeth Arden that makes something similar to these? Uh, the, this is the uh, ceramide version. And I'm trying to get one out. One of you guys said they look like little diaphragms and I can't unsee that. <laughs> but basically, they're little individual capsules and you twist off the top and the serum's in the inside so you get a single dose in each one of these little diaphragms. <laughs> and this is a thicker kind of a serum, so I prefer to use it at night, especially after I've done like my tretinoin because it's a really soothing, thick gel feeling serum. And I like that it is this like single dose delivery method. It's really simple. It's, it's really pretty sitting on the counter. I think I said that last time I talked about it too, but I'm really enjoying these. I'm about halfway out of them. They're on the pricier end for Beauty Pie stuff but I'm loving them. Last little skincare thing I wanna get in here, I'm gonna mention it one more time, the Frutia Avocado. This is a moisturizer. It is the Avocado Relief Cream. I don't have my readers or my magnifying glass here handy. I just find this to be, again, super soothing, nicely moisturizing, wears well under makeup, and the packaging just crushes my soul in the best, best way possible. Okay, I have a couple fails here. Let's just get the fails out of the way because they're in the same bin and 
So everybody's been having Norwex parties lately, right? Uh, I went to my friend's Norwex party. I didn't go. I went online to my friend's Norwex party. And they had a facial exfoliating mitt. And they've got a few skincare things. This is the only thing I tried. And I thought, oh, cool. Let's let's try that. I, I like the, I like, you've seen my little teardrop exfoliating mitt kind of a thing that I got at TJ Maxx and I can never link it because it doesn't really exist anymore. Uh, but I like it. Uh, so I decided to try this and uh, you guys, I was so disturbed. It's dirty now because I used it to clean my sink. That's how rough this thing is. This thing is so rough. I was so disturbed when I tried using it that before I put it on my face, I went back onto the website to make sure that I ordered the right product and then to make sure that the product I received is the right pro like it didn't get put in the wrong packaging or something because this feels like something you should scrub your sink with. It's so rough. And I'm like, well, maybe I'm just being weird and sensory. You know, maybe something tactile is just off with me. So I tried it. It scratched my face. <laughs> like scratched, scratched my, uh, no, mm-mm. Yeah, so now I keep it in my bathroom and I clean my sink with it. How I would love, love to hear any skincare professional test this. You know, get get a Dr. Dre to look at this. You know, even get someone like Lab Muffin Beauty Science. One, get anybody that, this can't be good for your skin. Are there any estheticians out there? Like somebody needs to try this and tell me if I'm overreacting to how rough this thing is. Cause I really can't imagine any professional that knows anything about skincare telling me that this is okay to use on my face. I could be wrong. I am not a professional, but any of you out there, is there anyone out there watching that knows, has experience with this thing? Who? it's just no, no. All right, my other two fails are makeup. This one I thought I liked. And as time went on, I realized, no, the reason it looks patchy is because it's patchy. So sad. CoverGirl, True Blend. You know I love my CoverGirl, but I want to show you, I'm going to compare this to the blushes. I have a couple of shades of the blushes. The blushes are gorgeous. This bronzer, and I think it's the only shade. It's got a shade name on it, but it's the only one I've ever seen at the store. 390 Sunset Glitz. And it's usually in the same, cause it's in the same numbering line as the blushes. Like, so this is 320 Love Me, and it's kind of like the end of the line, but it is labeled. It's the So Flushed High Pigment Bronzer. And this is the So Flushed High Pigment Blush. The blushes are great. The bronzer's really patchy. I, I, I did a few foundation reviews over the last couple months and I would think that the foundation was patchy and in the most recent one that I thought that, that my forehead looked patchy, I realized it's this because that's the one thing that they all had in common was this bronzer. So I am moving this to a fail. It will either be given away or donated. The other fail, uh, this pains my heart as well. See my heart, it hurts. Pat McGrath, uh, you know I love me some Pat McGrath. This is the eyeliner, what is the name? The Permagel Ultra Glide Eye Pencil. This gets really good reviews and it's fine as an eyeliner, as a regular outside the waterline eyeliner. But on my waterline, I use it to tight line. That's where I use my black liner typically. I had so much, and I tr three different times now, it, bled so much down onto my lower waterline from the upper waterline that it just, it doesn't stay put at all. Like drastically to the point that one time I actually had like almost a teardrop of black coming through my inner corner of my eye from this running. It, I, maybe my eyes are weird. I'm sure they are, but I cannot use this in my waterline. Fine as like regular eyeliner, but the waterline, absolute, at, like not just a fail. It's like, absolutely not. I'm sorry, Pat, I love you, but that liner doesn't work for me. Not on my waterline. Okay, 
I have some eyeshadow palettes and I want to get them out of the way because I think I talked about some of them already, but with holiday shopping season upon us, I want to make sure you know the best of the best in my world right now. It's just my opinion and you, you know I'm an alien. So uh, number one, Juvia's Place, the Topes palette. I was actually online recently and I don't remember what I was looking up, but I was super surprised to see that this isn't getting like through the roof reviews because I've been using it in a bunch of my recent videos and I think it's gorgeous. Now, of course, I am a cool toned grayish and taupe are like two of my favorite things in terms of just, I love me some like cool neutrals. And this even goes a little bit warm. Like you can pull some warmth out of this thing too, but I know cool tones are population wise don't work on as many people because the the number of people with x skin tone whatever i don't i wish i remembered the numbers i looked it up one time but uh, i was really surprised it was getting less than four stars just a little bit and i would say it's brilliant i love it <laughs> so your mileage may vary but uh i'm digging the heck out of it next one oh love it the Lorac Noir palette. Lorac's formula, I've said this so many times and I'm gonna say it again. The thing about Lorac is that their eyeshadow formula is so predictable in the best way. Number one, what you see in the pan is what you see on the lid. It is very consistent that way. Number two, the formula itself from one palette to the next is consistent. So it's the kind of brand where if you like this formula, you can just shop by color scheme. And if you see a color story that you like, you can buy the palette and know that you're gonna like the formula because they're very consistent. Now this is supposedly a, a reformulated sort of improved kind of a thing. And I don't know, it seems to perform the same on me and I loved it to begin with. It's also supposed to be somehow removable and I have not uh, investigated that at all. But that makes me think you could refill maybe. Maybe you can buy singles, I'm not sure. But I was really happy to see this come out because I was having a moment where I feared that, that Lorac might be disappearing because I think they're being pulled out of my Kohl's store. It looked like it anyway. Maybe they were just redoing the beauty section. I'm not sure. But I was happy to see it released. They released a few palettes. That's the one I grabbed and it's lovely, just like all the other Lorac palettes. Let's talk Wayne Goss. No, let's do the eyeshadows. Let's finish the eyeshadows. Natasha Denona Glam, pretty sure I've said this a few times. Again, it's my color story. It is right in my wheelhouse. It's the cool toned, the taupes and the grays and the grayages and mmm, mmm, this is gonna live on my vanity. The other one, and I just mentioned this in a video, I've only used it a couple times, but it's the Natasha Denona Trichrome palette. And I just wanna say, if, you, if you're interested in this color story, my biggest reason for not approaching this palette initially, I waited a few days before, I'm just blinding you guys with this mirror. I waited a few days before I, I purchased it after it was launched because I was like, there's only three trichrome shades in there and they're calling it the trichrome palette. Like what? It's still worth it. <laughs> they're beautiful and I love the color story. So that is what it is. Now, I will say one thing about this color story is that when you look at these shades, it's you can look at most of these, probably with the exception of the trichromes, and say, I've got that shade. You know, I have it in a different palette. But here's how I feel about the whole I've already got that shade argument. And this is just my personal approach to eyeshadow. I don't want to remember where that particular green shade is in my collection or where that particular plum color is in my collection. I don't want to have to dig through my eyeshadow palettes to find the colors. I want a curated set of colors that work together all in one place. So I only have to grab this. And it's not even just for travel purposes because I'm not doing any of that right now. It's just convenience. It's the, yeah, if I've got that pink in another palette, so be it. I'm not gonna dig through all my palettes to find it. You know what I'm saying? So yes, some of these are very common shades. Uh, but I like it all in one palette. That's just me. Last one I want to mention, I think this was, last time I checked, it was sold out on Sephora, but they still had it on Pat's website. Pat McGrath, <laughs> Pat, like we're BFFs. Uh, the Pat McGrath Mega Mothership Celestial Palette. Mm, this one's gonna live on my vanity too. I'm very happy that 
it's less expensive than the giant motherships. And what I would prefer, I, I just, I like the idea of less packaging, you know, the, the packaging's less expensive, more eyeshadows, because that's the whole point, <laughs> right? So uh, I'm loving that as well. All right, now we can talk about Wing Goss, because this is the blush palette. The Wing Goss blush, this is Blush Peony, and uh, I love it. I'm using it almost every day. I do wish the highlight was less of a pink shift, and that's just a personal color preference for me. Let's see if I can get, I uh, might as well put them side, oh, it's so soft, it's so soft, you guys. Might as well put them side by side. I wish the highlight was less of a pink shift. Watch, it's not, it's not shifting that pink on camera. It shifts really pink on my face. <laughs> Maybe I just need to try it again. It's, it's, it really isn't as pink on camera. I swear it looks pink on my face. I'm not wearing it today, but it's a beautiful formula, and the one thing that Wayne seems to do amazingly with his complexion products is make a formula that suits all skin types, issues. It's not gonna emphasize texture, it's not going to emphasize wrinkles and lines, and he really does pay attention to making varieties of shades that complement all skin tones. I cannot wait until that man puts out a foundation. There's a rumor that the foundation that the model in his most recent launch ad, so the blue eyeshadow palette, I can't think of the name. Is it Blue Topaz? I did not buy it yet. I probably will eventually. But the older woman that he has as a model for that eyeshadow palette, the, she's gorgeous by the way. Oh my gosh, if I can be so lucky. The rumor is that she's wearing Wayne Goss's upcoming foundation. I have no idea if that's true. I did not even attempt to fact check or find it, and I wouldn't be able to fact check it anyway. Like, there's no way, I have no inside scoop. I, I have nobody, I have no connections that would know those things. Oh, but if that's true, her skin looked amazing. Oh, I hope it's true. I really, 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 really hope it's true. All right, I have two more makeup items. I think that's it. No, I have more fails. Oh, I have a whole second bin of fails. Oh boy. Let's get the favorites out of here. Uh, Kaleidos Diamond Dasher Highlights. Uh, this one's super cute. I love the packaging. It's a little tin, you know, with a lid. And can I fit it onto the hand that I'm swatching the Wayne Goss? It's more of a champagne, so it's, it's on this side of the Wayne Goss. And it's a more subtle highlight. It's got tiny, tiny, tiny little flecks of glitter, but it's a, a champagne with a silver fleck to it, and it's gorgeous. It really does look like diamond, diamond dust type of a highlight. So it's not gonna give you like the sheen, it's gonna give you diamond dust, if that makes any sense. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous as a topper, but it's also gorgeous on its own. Loving it. Last makeup favorite. Booyah, Flower Beauty, holy cow. This is the Light Illusion Perfecting Powder. This is the shade Porcelain. I'm pretty sure, yes it is. And I cannot tell the difference. Both performance, texture, and appearance. I just said both, and then I said three things. I can't tell the difference between this and the Charlotte Tilbury uh, Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder can't tell the difference. Mmm. Love me a good dupe. It's gorgeous. And it's far less expensive. And it's just about the same amount of product. I checked. One of you guys pointed out that some of the Flower Beauty products have a lot less product in them that would impact, you know, the price per ounce. I can't remember which is which. Either the Charlotte Tilbury is 30 ounces and this is 28. I can tell you because I can just look. 0.28 ounces, yes. This one's 0.28 ounces. The Charlotte Tilbury is 0 0.30 ounces. So they're very similar in the amount of product that you get. And thank you for pointing that out. I cannot remember who pointed it out, but if you're watching, thank you, you know who you are because that was a brilliant point to make and that makes a difference to me. Like I, in my foundation reviews, I always tell you the price per ounce if, if it's not a one ounce bottle because that's how, it makes the most sense to me to compare prices. So 
Beautiful, brilliant, get it. They are now carried in CVS. If you have CVS near you, Flower Beauty, you will find it there. Let's rock a few of the rest of these fails. It Cosmetics, your skin but better setting spray. It's got skin-loving hyaluronic acid, aloe vera, coconut water, 16 hours. Uh, I wanted to like it. I really tried. I actually think this might make a better primer spray than it does a setting spray. But as a setting spray, I don't think it makes my makeup last any longer. In fact, I think it makes my makeup look patchy. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh... Next, Revolution Glow. This is the matte bronzer. This is another one. I thought I liked it. I did think I, I thought I liked it. It's patchy. It doesn't blend out smoothly. And it starts out looking beautiful. But as the day goes on, the lighter portions, you know, that beautiful gradient of blending goes away and you're left with patchiness. It's just patchy. I'm just not into patchy. All right, last one. Dove Refresh and Care Fresh Coconut Dry Shampoo. I had a sample size of this. Oh, this stuff makes my hair look bad. Bad, you guys. It's bad. Uh, looks like I have, like, massive dandruff going on, and it never blends into my hair. It always has a white cast, and it's not just a white cast. It's a white speckly cast and I don't I, I really couldn't get into how much or little it was helping with the oiliness of my hair because it looks so bad on my scalp so uh hmm yeah no I usually like to keep a dry shampoo right here on my vanity for right before I do videos ignore all the purple on my scalp today uh this one's not gonna cut it not even good enough to sit on my vanity to film videos. There you have it. Is that everything? I'm looking around, you guys. Trying to see if I missed anything. Still kind of a hot mess with all the construction. It's okay, though. That's everything. I think that's everything. I think that's all the favorites and fails. Of course, coming soon, we will start... Probably mid-December, I will start doing the countdowns for the top tens of all the categories of the entire year so stay tuned for that let me know in the comments what are your nominations for the best things of the year what do i want to make sure is on the list let me know make sure i don't miss anything <laughs> there you have it another fails and fails fails and fails that's a, well i did have more fails than usual Favorites and fails in the book. If you enjoy favorites and fails, if you would like me to keep on making them, give me a thumbs up down below. Please subscribe if you haven't already. I post new videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern time. And as always, thanks a lot for taking some time out of your day to geek out over makeup with me. I appreciate it and I hope you guys all have an awesome day or night wherever you are in the world. Take care of each other. Bye-bye.